TRT. This is an acronym that we hear in social media, in the news. What is TRT? What does it mean? What does it mean for you uh, as a man that may have issues or symptoms? We're going to discuss it after this, so keep watching. Hi, I'm Mike, the founder of Balance My Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and leaving comments so we can address it next time. Today, I'm here with Dr. Kathy O'Neill-Smith. She is a prominent doctor in Boston in the United States. We're here in the United Kingdom where we're going to discuss uh, this topic of TRT. First, we're going to talk a little bit about Dr. Smith's background. So thank you for coming. It's great to be here. I'm in, I'm in London rowing at the Henley Royal Regatta. And so I, I rose, raced here 40 years ago, and we're back for a row past Amazing. with my college teammates. That was really fun. That was really good that we were able to, to meet up. I know we've, mm -hmm. we've met in the past meetings. I'm really happy to have you as a friend on, on the channel. So uh, tell us a little bit about other, your, your background as well. So my background is in physiology and in science, and that was my background in undergrad, and then ultimately I went to medical school. Okay. And then from medical school, I trained at Harvard and did all of my work at, the, at Harvard University in Boston and ultimately went into internal medicine. I was a little disappointed with internal medicine in that in hospital-based medicine and sickness-based clinics, you treat a problem once it's fully along the way. The diagnosis has to be certain. And instead of treating something preventatively, we wait for things to get too bad that there's very difficult, it's very difficult to turn it around. And so ultimately, 15 years ago, I left my internal medicine practice at Harvard and I opened my own clinic, which is more aimed at using data, biomarkers, the same biomarkers I used at my sickness clinic, I now use in my wellness clinic. But I look at them in a different, from a different perspective, and my goal, Mike, is to make somebody well. So having a background in coaching novice-level athletes and weekend warriors and elite-level athletes, I know how to help them be well from a muscular standpoint. But here, I do the same thing from a medical standpoint. I take those biomarkers and I say, where are they? And how can we pull them back to wellness as opposed to letting them go in the opposite direction to illness and needing a medication? The name of your clinic, or the, the name of Dr. Smith's clinic is uh, Treat Wellness. And so for many people who are considering or wanting to know about what TRT is, uh, the question is, you know, do you fit the traditional um, model for TRT? There's certain rigorous guidance that some uh, societies have brought out. But when you're treating wellness, it looks at a much broader picture. So we're going to discuss what the TRT aspects are, sure. uh, how one goes on treatment, uh, and, and get uh, Dr. Smith's perspective uh, on what she does with her patients in the US. So with respect to aging, so not just biological, we have our chronological age, but what we want to do is have our biological age be younger than our chronological age. Not by decades, but certainly we don't want to be older biologically yeah. than we are chronologically. So if I'm 50 years old, I don't want to have a biology that's 53. I prefer to have a biology that's 50 or 48. And we can do that by optimizing you know, what's happening within the body, in the systems of the body and how they communicate. And when and if you have an infection or your immune system is disordered, many times, or if you have a, a poor diet or poor sleep, many times hormones, particularly the sex hormones, they will not be optimized. And so when the sex hormones are not optimized for you, as an individual within a range, within a, a range of uh, a reference range, then we want to optimize those because those will keep you well, not just young, that's not the goal. The goal is to be well and to be healthy and to have a health span as opposed to a lifespan, right? Be healthy for the whole course of your life instead of living your life in a lifespan but unhealthy. Okay. So we, we, many, I have 50% of the men, 
in my practice, 50% of the patients are men. And they see me for one sort of symptom or another. It might be fatigue, it might be poor sleep, it might be lack of performance at work or lack of performance at home. Um, so it really depends on what the symptoms are. But there are classic symptoms related to low T, very classic symptoms. And it really is a lack of recovery from anything in your life. Your sure. energy is low. Your brain doesn't function the way it used to. Uh, so it's, it's very complex. Um, and everybody has their own constellation of symptoms. Right? Each person is unique. So what we want to do is take the story, the symptoms that the patient relates, look at the biomarkers, and understand and determine what the problems are for that patient, how, can we, how we can optimize their well-being, their health span. How important are biomarkers? So I suppose is the blood test, because many men will have read about this, you know, uh, if they're looking for TRT, testosterone replacement therapy for their testosterone deficiency. The, uh, usually they'll say, well, well, what's my level or what, what level is acceptable for treatment? And how much does that play a role in modern uh, TRT these days versus symptoms? So how, how do you reconcile the two? That's a complicated question because it's sickness versus wellness, yeah. right? In the sickness world, you will have a uh, testosterone plasma level, blood level, that's quite low, too low. You will really have hit rock bottom before the conventional world will treat you. But in the wellness world and understanding uh, that it's r safe, that testosterone therapy is safe within a range, so I use the data and I use the, the symptomatology to coincide. There's not necessarily one that's more important than another because if, let's say you had a low T for two years and you didn't realize it, and let's say it had been dwindling over 10 years, and now from age 35 to 45, you're really not functioning well. So you may get used to that level of functioning, so symptoms are very important, but usually I will always do a trial of therapy. I will try the therapy to see how the symptoms resolve and to measure the levels to see what level, what blood level of testosterone a patient feels better at. And is there a magic number? Or no, you said no, no, there's absolutely not a magic number, no, because the data, the data from historically is kind of made up data. It, it wasn't um, when the data For came reference out, ranges. For reference so, yeah. ranges, right. And everyone's unique. It's the same with type 1 diabetes. You know, the reference range to get the A1C or that number in the blood is going to vary. The amount of insulin any patient needs to take depends on the person. So one person might need 20 units a day, which is a very low amount, but another person could need, need 100 units a day. Those are very different and it's the same thing with testosterone. Have you ever had a patient where you did a trial of treatment where they, it didn't work and you stopped the treatment or do most men then continue on with the treatment and get some success? Uh, I would say that because I know their levels starting out and I know their story starting out, most men have success. 99.9% .9 of men have success. So the question would be how are they gonna be treated as opposed, to what method of treatment we would use as opposed to um, whether or not they would benefit from it. Because the different methods make a, make a difference. You, know, you can't really eat your hormones. You can't take testosterone by mouth. That's not really the best way to take testosterone. Yeah. So which uh, modality of testosterone treatment do you normally see or prescribe for most men? Is there a particular one that you, is your go-to or do you look at uh, the individual patient? And I always do look at the individual patient, but with when I do the trial of therapy, it's always with an injection. Okay. So I always use a, t a testosterone injection and I treat them and we follow up with them with, within 24 to 48 hours to see how they're feeling. And typically they'll notice a difference. It's very unusual to have to do two trials of treatment so that they can see that that I would say doesn't, hasn't happened. So once, the question then is, will the patients do their therapy at home with injections? Will they come into the clinic? But there are some patients that don't want to inject, so that's rare, it's yeah. not common. So they might do a cream, they might do a nasal inhale, inhalant, but that's usually not for people with very low T. Um, so there's a variety of ways that you can do it and there's different modalities. But for those who don't want to inject that often, Classically, they will take a cream regularly every day, and they may inject three to four times a month as opposed to maybe eight times a month. Okay, and do you look at, uh, where does the role of SHBG come into play in, in your practice as far as um, measuring free testosterone or, or even guiding the type of treatment, uh, regime, the type of uh, the dosing 
that right. you're going to choose for them. Right. SHBG is part of everybody's lab testing. Yeah. So when we measure testosterone, we always measure SHBG. So we want to understand how the hormone, the testosterone hormone, is bound to protein. If it's bound, it's not active. If it's unbound and it can be released, that's the free testosterone that's available for the body to use. So SHBG is always a component of what we look at. We might use Tonkat Alley or some supplement to try to re re reduce the sex hormone binding globulin and see if we can free up testosterone. But if you have a low total testosterone or reserve of testosterone, it's really not gonna matter because a low total is not really gonna help the free. Yeah. But if you have a, a moderate or relatively normal low testosterone, it may help. I would say though that SHBG doesn't, it's really difficult and challenging to change that. So generally I look at the free testosterone and even though we may be working to reduce the SHBG simultaneously, we're treating with testosterone. Do you, do you use it to, to guide the treatment as far as the frequency of in injections on SHBG? Because I know at our clinic, right. you know, if there's a low SHBG, um, they may be excreting the testosterone too quickly. Correct. Is, is that yes. kind of how Yes. You, okay. Yeah, we do. All right, that's, that's what I thought. Sometimes because yeah. it's, it's a, one of those questions where, yeah, SHBG, sometimes it is what it is, and with uh, enough testosterone, it just kind of goes down on, on its own because right. you're freeing up or you've got enough free testosterone with the right amount of you know, in testosterone injection or, or cream. Ideally that happens, right? But so there are some, There yeah. are some cases where that doesn't happen. Have you had to find that you would have to give a, a larger dose of testosterone for the high SHBG patients to overcome uh, the, the high level as far as getting more free out of it? I would say that occasionally I do that, but I'm, I'm cautious about, my biggest concern is if somebody needs testosterone therapy, it's like needing estrogen therapy or type one diabetic needing insulin therapy. Yeah. So, if you need it and you're over 45, it's likely that you're always going to need some. So I want to be sure that patients have a level, a, they can do a program, a treatment program, that's easy enough for them. So if they are going to run out of testosterone, it's going to be difficult to prescribe it or whatever it is, I need to work within what is available to them so that they have it for a long time. Just like a type 1 diabetic must have insulin for yeah. life. Right, and there is the book, Testosterone for Life, yeah. by the Harvard urologist, Abraham Morgenthaler, Morgenthaler yeah. Dr. Morgenthaler, and you know, testosterone typically is for life, and we are at our strongest when our testosterone is peaking, so I really feel I have to work within the realm of what the patient will do, the individual patient, to make sure that they'll take this for life, because a little bit of something is a lot better than a whole lot of nothing. nothing. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so true. Okay. And I know there were some in some of the papers that, that came out. I think the ISSM, the International Aging uh, Mail, was the fact that there are some people who might be slightly resistant uh, to their own testosterone because of the uh, receptor, uh, androgen receptor in the genomic testing that would say they have very long CAG repeats. Right. And for these, they may have a higher level of testosterone than the range says, but may actually have all the symptoms that require testosterone. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So really it's about testosterone resistance at the receptor level, yeah. just like we have insulin resistance. Yeah. That is very yeah. well understood. And so resistance of the receptor to receiving testosterone could be an issue for somebody. And so you want to overcome that resistance in order to have it. So the ranges are, in my mind, mute. The goal okay. is to help and to monitor with your patient and to know very, you know, every three, then six, then 12 months, understanding and having the patient understand their body better. Okay. So what would you, if you had to summarize what TRT is for like the newbie that's never heard of it? I mean, obviously people that watch the channel, you know, are familiar, but there are people that just have come across the channel and they're like, what's, what's this TRT I'm hearing about? What would, in, in a kind of a brief summary, what would you say TRT is? TRT is for longevity, is for creating your health span, it's for optimizing aging, you know, not to prevent illness as opposed to be a superman, that's not the goal. The goal is to be well as long as you possibly can and to live well and to have a health span. So TRT and the symptoms of low T are readily available and I'm sure they're on yeah. your website. So understanding the fatigue and not having the benefits from working out in the gym, not having the benefits in the bedroom, not having the benefits at work with a sharp brain, any of those things, if you have a blood test that measures low T, it is for you, for sure. Excellent. 
All right, so that's, that's it for what your what is TRT. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Smith, for being with us. And we uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, thanks again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right, Great to be here. Thanks.